Okay, we'd like to welcome you to our current event and weekly Bible study. And this is going to be a new part for September 13th, 2009. And essentially, this is going to be kind of like my testimony, but a lot of the testimony that I'm going to be talking about today relates to uh, supernatural things that I have experienced as a Christian, supernatural answer to prayer, uh, contending with evil, a lot of experiences that I personally had. A lot of these you've probably never heard before. I've mentioned these, one or two of these in other studies. But this is going to be more of a comprehensive look. I was talking to a Christian brother this week from Texas. And um, and so I was talking to him. I was telling him a lot of these things. And I said, you know what I ought to do? I ought to just do a study where I talk about this. All of these things that have happened to me over the years. And... Um, because I think ultimately it would be an encouragement to most people. And the things that I'm going to be talking about today, I believe, are going to be more and more commonplace moving into the day and times we're moving into where evil will abound. Um, but where evil abounds, you know, God's grace all the more. And we're going to need to... Uh, I just believe our faith is going to have to be increased moving into the times we're moving into. And hopefully this will be an encouragement to you. So, essentially it goes back to about 1984, and 94, I'm sorry, where I had just graduated chiropractic college, because people say, well, how did you get saved? Just graduated chiropractic college in, uh, I believe it was September of 93. Came out, started practicing with a chiropractor, who was also a Christian, very into the very radical, charismatic stuff. And which always kind of freaked me out, even back then. And he had um, given me a book, though, called En Route to Global Occupation by Gary Kaw. You can still get it. It's an awesome book. I still recommend it to this day. And in the book, uh, Gary Kaw was an insider for the United Nations, worked there. And he basically lays out the whole Illuminati agenda particularly through the Freemasons, how they're working with the United Nations, and a lot of the global, how the global government is being implemented and run. The first half of the book is basically his story, and then most of the last half is just the documentation on this. And so it's a very well done book. I mean, if you're a skeptic, it's a great book. He had a whole um, bookshelf of these. He would give out to patients. And... Um, Gave them to me. I took it, and in in there, you know, probably about halfway through or whatever, you know, it gave you. It basically led you through where where it told you about salvation and Jesus Christ and how this was all predicted in the Bible and these types of things. And when I got to that point in the book, it was like, oh man, I mean, I was I was sold on the gospel on the whole nine yards, and that was how I got saved reading that book. And um, then as a baby Christian, uh, I really wasn't in any kind of church because I still didn't want to go to his church. It, it just it freaked me out too much, the whole charismatic stuff. And so I was still pretty much in a carnal type of state. I had changed, but I was still had a lot of the world in me. Okay, And I didn't really have any kind of real guidance whatsoever. And uh, to make a long story short, I married... Um, ill-advised type of marriage and for about four years I was under the chastening of the Lord and the Bible says whom the Lord loveth he also chasteneth if, and if you be without chastisement then you're bastards like an illegitimate son so I was in the state where I was I was in um, I was chastened uh, and it was brutal really brutal and I didn't understand what the chasing of the Lord was. I really wasn't in the Word that much. But I did have a desire to serve the Lord. I really did. But all I knew was the charismatic angle. I didn't know about the King James Bible. Uh, I wasn't in any kind of sound doctrine. And all I ever had before that was a very, very secular background where my mom was, you know, into the yoga and the New Age. My dad was into the, you know, big time rock and roll and, and having all the toys and buying all the stuff and the big house and uh, you know, keeping up with the Joneses and all that stuff, all that the world had to offer. That was all I'd ever known. And, you know, partying and doing all the other stuff that I was pretty good at. 
So, about four years, I was I was in this marriage, and you know, I would say it was pretty much just pure chasing of the Lord. My ex-wife, uh, at the end of the four years, just so you know, she'd been married two times prior to me, and was actually the one that filed for divorce. She left me at the same time and was sleeping with another man before the divorce was final. But for me, once I was freed from this situation, I went back to the only thing I had known, which was the charismatic and the Pentecostal movement. And uh, I was really in the Word a lot, but the Word that I was in was like the Living Translation, the NIV, and you know I got, got into that. Got into this big church near where I live. It was the largest church in, um, the largest Pentecostal church in uh, Cape Coral, the city where I live, Kingsway Christian Center. And um, immediately, you know, because I was a doctor and, and I was, I exhibited a lot of zeal, they wanted to, I mean, almost instantly elevate me to positions where I was like in teaching. I mean, I had my own. Uh, Wednesday Bible study, I believe I had, or something like that. Maybe it was Tuesday. And I loved it, but I really wasn't qualified. You know, I hadn't even, I was a baby Christian, essentially. Well, at the same time, in the church, they were having a big problem. Between the services, somebody was breaking in and putting bones and ashes on the pews. Okay? And, I mean, it was several times they were doing this. So I, uh, I mean, obviously, I knew that was evil. And somebody that had a witchcraft background was doing it. So I ended up bringing a lot of people in uh, in the church together in a, in a prayer meeting type setting. And we were praying against this and these types of things. And we must have been making some impact because they really started to target me. Now, again, what I'm going to be talking about today are a lot of the supernatural experiences that I've had in... Um, since I've been saved, okay, and this was probably one of the first ones, so what ended up happening is, uh, in this next thing, they were targeting me, and one day I was at home, I was at my parents' house, I was sleeping, taking a nap or something, it was in in the middle of the day, and um, again, I think I've told this story other times, but I'm going to try to give a compilation of all of these stories kind of in one document. I know there's going to be stuff I leave out, but to the best of my recollection, this is what happened. I was sleeping, laying on my right side, facing toward the window, on the if you're facing the bed, the left side of the bed. And I was having a dream. And in this dream, I dreamt that I was on this island. And the island was in the middle of Lake Okeechobee. And on this island, there was this group of people that were there that seemed to be my friends. It was like some type of communal-like environment. Now, Lake Okeechobee is is, uh, the second largest freshwater lake in America. It's in the more near the southern part of Florida. And at the time, I didn't even know there were islands in it. There's about five. But anyway, that was the dream I had. There was this island. I was on the island. People were... Um, on this island with me. I thought they were my friends, and, but at, what I noticed is as the sun was going down, their countenance started changing. Now, normally I don't remember dreams this vividly either. And this experience that I'm about to relate to you has never happened to me before or since. So this isn't something like that happened to me all the time. I've never had it happen to me before or since. In my dream, I knew that the people on the island were becoming evil as the sun started to grow down. And I knew in my dream that I had to get off this island. If I didn't get off the island, that things were going to get nasty. So, I meandered out to, I believe there was a long wooden boardwalk in the dream out into the lake. And my boat was there. And they all followed me out. And as I was getting into my boat, and just as I was just shoving off the dock, I looked up and their faces and their countenances totally changed. Just as the sun was going down, and they literally looked like these vampiric creatures, is what it was. I ascertained that they were, it was an island, like a vampiric coven or something.